I put a cold gas thruster on this RC car. That's right, just like the thrusters used in outer space, but more importantly, it's like the one that Tesla's supposed to use on the Roadster Space Expedition to hit a 1.1 second zero to 60. Now, if you're not familiar with my channel, just a few months ago, I released a fan car that could beat the Roadster and the Model S Plaid in the zero to 60. And I'm guessing Elon Musk saw this and thought, there's no way we can let a toy beat us release the SpaceX version. So in today's video, we're gonna see if I can add a homemade cold gas thruster to this RC car and beat that 1.1 second estimate coming out of Tesla. And this requires me to actually approach the build more like a dragster as opposed to a road car because I won't have the fans that generated the massive downforce from my prior build. So this means the three main areas that I need to focus on during the design is number one, tire adhesion and effective coefficient of friction. Number two, keeping the wheels on the ground at launch. And number three, obviously the thruster itself. To increase the coefficient of friction, I will be running some really soft foam tires and prepping them with a non-toxic adhesive I've made to see if I can get maximum grip. Dragsters actually run on a specially prepared surface that's pretty much a glue trap, and Tesla has indicated that to get their more impressive zero to 60 times, they run on a similarly prepped track. So I'm just trying to remain consistent with what advantage the Tesla would have as well. Seriously, watch videos of people getting stuck to a drag strip and you'll understand just how they achieve their insane accelerations. Top fuel dragsters, for example, have a 250 square inch contact patch and you put that on a glue trap, it's no wonder why they can get insane accelerations because their effective coefficient of friction is like greater than four. In order to use all of this extra friction I hope to get, I'm gonna need a wheelie bar because even the last fan car with less traction wheels would flip if I floored it and the fans were even on a low setting. So I designed this wheelie bar to keep the front end down. I added some shocks as well to absorb some of the bumps on the uneven surface I drive on because I don't want it to lift the back tires off the ground if the wheelie bar does hit a bump. If I were running on a smoother surface, this may not be required. And of course, since this is way different than the fan car, we need a new body, just so there's absolutely no confusion. Now, I promise we're gonna to get to the design and testing of the thruster here in just a minute, but first, I wanna test out the wheelie bar and see if it actually works, and I also wanna characterize the baseline numbers of this car before I add the thruster. The wheelie bar works pretty good, but I'm getting the front end picking up a little bit more than I wanted and I may be losing acceleration, so hopefully adjusting the springs will fix some of that. My max typical acceleration was in the 1.2 G range, but as the tires warmed up, I was able to actually get in the 1.8 G range, which is really impressive for just these tires. And then eventually I overheated the tires and my acceleration dropped way back down. Now I wanna try out some really soft Shore 25A foam tires that hopefully are soft enough to give me a much larger contact patch as well as hold on to the track prep adhesive a lot better. And surprisingly, these tires actually did a lot worse than the harder rubber tires. I think it's because they were just way too soft and they would destroy themselves under heavy acceleration. My typical max acceleration was in the 1.1 G range, but let's see if the actual track prep adhesive does increase that a little bit. It turns out the track prep adhesive definitely did help me launch harder, but then shortly down the track, it picked up a bunch of debris and that actually made the tires slippery and it was very unstable because it was just covered in this dust. With this knowledge, it is time to design and build our cold gas thrusters. 
The design I started with uses disposable CO2 cartridges and a homemade servo valve that opens when I pull the throttle. The cartridges are also only good for one run, so I don't need to close the valve, I just leave it wide open at takeoff. I should also mention that these CO2 cartridges are pressurized to like over 800 PSI, which means you really don't want to play with them because they can be very dangerous. My first tests were focused on the nozzle itself, and I started with an eighth inch NPT fitting, a quarter inch NPT fitting, and then eventually went to a converging diverging nozzle. I found the converging diverging nozzle to perform the best, but I do want to point out that my test setup was complete garbage. I'm using a gram scale with a printed bracket and literally counting frames to gather an approximate duration of thrust so I know the force and the thrust duration of each test setup. Regardless, I use this to actually characterize my nozzle geometry, and I found that actually reducing the nozzle area to a point gave me more force. I guess it has something to do with the efficiency of the thruster itself, or it could be my garbage test setup. The max thrust that I was able to achieve was just shy of four pounds, and to get here did require me tweaking the pressure chambers a little bit more. The chamber prior to the valve is actually there to store CO2, because the cartridges themselves have a really small hole, which limits my total mass flow rate. I wanted this section large enough to dump all of the CO2 in under two seconds, but I didn't want it so large that it just totally drops my pressure before I've even opened the valve. If we look at the simplest form of the thrust equation, we can see that thrust force is equal to mass flow rate times specific impulse times gravity, which means that if I can push 20 grams of CO2 through the thrust in one second, I get a force of about 2.7 pounds. But if I double that to 40 grams of CO2 in a second, I'm gonna get about 5.7 pounds of thrust. And at this point, I don't actually know the total weight of the system, so I'm not sure how much thrust force I'll actually need. With that out of the way, we are finally ready to strap this thruster to the car and get some real world data. And on this first test, I'm not running the electric motor, just the thruster. Luckily, I had the help of my shop assistant, so we were ready in no time. First, I want to say that I think the thruster actually looks really cool in these slow mos It's definitely worth it if we're looking at appearance alone. But the one good data log I actually got was a little disappointing. I was barely getting over a quarter of a G, which really isn't enough to get me there. So let's hope this is just down to some measurement error and we somehow get a lot more thrust and we can achieve our 1.1 second zero to 60 with the electric motor turned on. But before we turn that motor on and go for some hard launches, I want to talk about one more thing I did have to add. For the launch with the thruster and electric motor, I was using a servo delay module, which basically allows me to completely mash the throttle on the transmitter, but it slows down the response of the ESC. So I'm doing this because I want to open the servo valve right away, but I don't want the throttle to go full open because that's just gonna spin the tires and lose me some acceleration. After installing two CO2 cartridges, we are finally ready to get a full test run in. On the first launch, we peaked at about 1.35 Gs, which isn't even remotely close to my 2.3 G target. That's right, if I wanna beat the supposed 1.1 second zero to 60 of the Tesla Roadster SpaceX edition, I have to average 2.3 Gs of acceleration for the entire run. So let's go give it another shot. A 
Unfortunately, we lost it on just a second run. So I'm gonna yank the thruster off and just go have a little bit of fun while I beg you to please subscribe, consider liking the video, and hopefully we'll come back stronger. And while doing this running around, I noticed another design flaw I had. I never actually put bearings in the wheelie bar is I figured a clearance bore would be good enough for just a couple of passes in like a drag strip configuration, but it turns out that the wheels were spinning so fast when I was messing around that it generated so much heat from the friction that it actually melted the PLA. Luckily, I could just 3D print another, but in the long run, I would add bearings to the wheelie bar. This car was actually so unstable that I never actually finished a full zero to 60 run, which means that Tesla's theoretical 1.1 seconds wins, I guess. Now let's have some real talk. The car ended up coming in at almost 10 pounds, which means I'm unlikely to even get over a half a G of acceleration from the thruster, even with a theoretically perfect system because I need it to last for at least a full second. And to improve on this, I really have two main options. The first is to have a much larger CO2 tank, which in the long run just adds more weight and undoes some of my gains. And the second option is to go with a much higher pressure air system, which is probably along the lines of where Tesla is going to go from the beginning. But that's also not something I want to waste a bunch of money and time doing because it's going to cost a lot more money than what I've done here. I actually hated driving this car because it was so unstable and just not a lot of fun. Fun. The cartridges themselves were about $4 per launch and right after launch they froze up and they were really a pain to handle in general. The center of gravity ended up being way too high because of where I had space available to mount the thruster and so it handles like trash. But this chassis is perfect for a fan car and you can see just how well it sticks to the ground in some of my other videos if you're curious. The thruster car is really only good for a really short drag race and totally worthless at road racing. And if you've been to both a road race and a drag race recently, it's clear as day that the rest of the world also agrees road racing is better. Okay, okay. So that drag race may have just been time trials at a time period when not many people were still getting out and about, and the NASCAR race was actually the inaugural race, it's Circuit of the Americas. So maybe I am uh, manipulating your perception intentionally. The truth of the matter is, even on race days for the most popular series, a road race always doors the attendance of dragsters, but if you've never experienced a top field dragster, it is one of the most impressive things in the world. Everything shakes. 10,000 horsepower is insane to see live. I will admit that this car could have been designed way better, but to really even come close to competing with the fan car, I would have to spend a ton of money and it would still only be good for very short duration runs. So in my book, it's not worth pursuing any further. And I also have absolutely no experience with propulsion systems, so it's possible some of you know way better than I do, and there's some critical errors I made that I could improve on, so please, if you have some good feedback, let me know. I'm really curious to see if this could be made to work without a really complex HPA system. As a matter of fact, I should use this time now to thank a lot of y'all for some really awesome feedback that you gave me on the fan car system. As an example, I, I agree, you pretty much confirmed that I have to go censored if I want to improve the stuttering at the beginning. You guys have some awesome ideas and you're really knowledgeable, so I always appreciate the help. I also know that I could have used model rocket motors to save a lot of weight, but that's not a cold gas thruster, so it's really not in the same category as the Tesla Mo uh, Roadster uh, SpaceX version, and that's what I wanted to stick to the theme of. And I do want to say that the servo delay module may be okay for long periods, but when I'm trying to repeat a 1.1 to 1.5 second launch over and over and over, it's just inconsistent. Even with the setting being the exact same, the delay was all over the place. Lastly, I want to thank everyone for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Love hearing from y'all. As always, thanks again, and y'all have a good one.